Hi everyone, this is Rabbi Marcus Rubenstein again. How are you? Uh, we're at Temple Sinai again in my office. Uh, it's about Wednesday afternoon. Um, it's starting, even though it's September and fall, I guess, has started. It's uh, still pretty steamy outside in uh, Orange County, New York. Uh, I'm looking forward to these fall leaves changing. We'll see if that happens anytime soon. Well, welcome to the Reshit Chokhmah Shi'or. This is the fourth lesson. Um, we're getting closer and closer to the high holidays. Slichot is going to be starting Saturday night uh, at Temple Sinai and around the world. Uh, and and uh, the Jews around the world will be starting, at least the Jews of Ashkenaz will be starting their uh, real repentance, uh, their giving of uh, tachnonim or supplications starting on uh, this Saturday night um, and at, at Temple Sinai if you'd like to come we'll be doing a special learning for Slichot that I will be teaching at 9 o'clock um, and at 10 o'clock our services will actually start for Slichot at night um, please join us, that's going to be wonderful um, so this is again the fourth Shior of Reshit Chokhmah and we're going to continue on uh, where we left off this is actually a continuation of the Zohar we were learning uh, previously um, it's kind of a different you don't need to really study what was before but um, it is technically a continuation of what was before so I'm looking forward to getting into it with you alright at the top and furthermore one can interpret the verse my beloved is like a gazelle or young heart behold he standeth behind our wall, he looketh in through the windows, he peereth through the lattice. This verse is from Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 9. Um, this is a very interesting verse. Um, you know, Song of Songs in general is a very hard uh, book of the Torah to really translate. Um, and, you know... You look at it, and uh, there's actually two words in this verse alone, right next to each other, that are what's called hapaxagamenons. Um, they're words that only appear once within all of the Torah, within all of the Bible. Um, and they actually appear right next to each other. Um, so it's a very strange verse, um, and it's very hard to understand and, and figure out what these words mean, since they only appear once in the whole Bible, so it's very hard to compare them to other examples in the Scripture. Um, but we, we've kind of sort of figured it out, but it's a very elusive, amorphous verse. Um, so a lot of the times the rabbis will choose these verses in particular um, to um, give a homiletic interpretation of. So that's what we're doing with this here. So again, the verse, my beloved is like a gazelle or young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall. I underlined in the text sheet, he looketh in through the windows, mashkiach becholach olonot in Hebrew, that he looks through all the windows, he peereth through the last. The part that's underlined, he looketh in through the windows, is what the, 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 the rabbi will be commenting on here, Rabbi Eliyahu Dubidis, and uh, here the Zohar will be concentrating on. So the Zohar continues, these are the windows of the synagogue. So the windows we're talking about in the verse are actually referring to the windows in the synagogue, right? And I always picture this, the, the, the lights shining through the windows of the synagogue. Always a place of inspiration for me, for sure. Especially if you have a beautiful stained glass window. Um, it continues, because the Father God and the children, B'nai Israel, those are my parentheses. Uh, it really just says, because the Father and the children... Um, they are tied together by the synagogue, and he, God, every day looks out on them and gives to them their sustenances. Um, this is an amazing uh, concept. That, yeah, I honestly don't see that often. I've, I've really never seen it before. Um, but this unbelievable idea that the synagogue is really the tie, it's really the knot, um, it's the connection between B'nai Yisrael, the Jews, and Hashem, um, that... Of course, we know that the synagogue is the place that's connected, that we're connected to God at. We connect to God, right? Because we come to Shabbat services, Bezrat Hashem. We come to holiday services. We pray. We have our family occasions there. And we certainly try to connect to God. That's kind of in the place designated to connect to God. Um, but honestly, the synagogue is a rather late institution. It was only created um, in rabbinic times. It surely wasn't in the front of the Bible, or it wasn't existent during the time of the Bible. Um... 
So it's really interesting to see this written uh, here and the synagogue taking such a prominent point uh, as the connection site between God and man. It's really gorgeous here. And hopefully uh, plenty of the Jews at Temple Sinai will be connecting to Hashem um, during our uh, Rosh Hashanah and Slichot and Yom Kippur services this year. So this is where we connect to God. And, and, and God is every day looking through the windows at the synagogue and trying to give people, God wants to give us the sustenance. God wants to give us life. God wants to give us food. God wants to support us like a loving father. Um, but then he's going to give a verse from Exodus now. Hashem looks this way and that. Um, the Coming from the verse uh, from Exodus chapter 2 verse 12 of Moses looking this way and that before he struck the Egyptian taskmaster, seeing if there was any man around to stop him. Um... And so they're going to interpret this verse in a wild way, saying, um, if there's one who arouses himself in tshuva. So God, like Moses, will look around this way and that to see if there's anyone who will arouse themselves in tshuva, who will arouse themselves in repentance. Um, that's, that's when God knows that he can give sustenance. That's when he knows that he can actually answer the prayers in that regard and give sustenance to people. Um, uh, and then this, it beautifully says the Zohar, one who is ready to break down the pris their own prison, um, saying to the prisoners, go forth to them that are in darkness, show yourselves. This comes from Isaiah chapter 49, verse 9, this beautiful, beautiful quote from Isaiah. Um, and I love it. The Zohar is referring to the, the, the path of Chuba really as breaking out of a prison. And why? What is the prison? Prison? The Yetzir Hara, the evil inclination, the thing that keeps us inside and says, no, no, you can't be better. You can't do any better. This is the best you can do. And, uh, you know, I know it's not the the best circumstance, but, you know, okay, you're going to stay how you are. No, you got to get better. You got to change from your sinful path. And the Zohar really is comparing it from breaking out of a prison. It, and, it's, and it's sometimes really that hard. It's like you have to smash through a cement wall in order to change it. And it's... And it's very, very hard, which is why only with Hashem's help can we really, um, in particular, get better. So, we're going to keep going now. Um, and, it, of course, this verse is beautiful. Go forth to them that are in darkness, show yourselves. And the verse really says, Galuotam, meaning reveal yourselves, like that there's something covering you. That that prison that you're in, that state of mind that's imprisoning, that sar, that narrow place where you are, that sorus, that struggles that you're going through, you need to escape out of. It's covering up who you are. It's covering up the way Hashem sees you. So we got to take that covering off, right? Reveal who you truly are, right? That's why Shlomo Kaaba kind of say, always say, come back, come back, return to who you are, return to who you're supposed to be, right? It's just a, a beautiful song. Um, so we're going to keep going. And then it repeats this full verse in Exodus, and he turned this way and that, and he saw that there was no man there from Exodus, again, chapter 2, verse 12. So rather, each person just keeps walking and seeing things in his particular way and what they toil in. Um, so Zohar, Zohar is really coming up and saying, no, really, people aren't looking at tshuva. They're not looking at becoming better people. They're really just stuck in their own perspective. They're stuck in their own old way of thinking. They're not really trying to break out and think in a new way and, and, and become... Uh, better people and see things in a new light, right? Very important. Zohar is kind of angry here. God is kind of angry. Right? He knows the potential of each person is so infinite. And instead, we look at things through our one perspective of way, and we don't open ourselves up. We got to open ourselves up at this time. We really got to look big. We have to be big. We have to stand tall and see a deeper, bigger vision of who we can be. We're going to continue on here. Um, this is what is meant when it is written, each one to his gain, one and all, Isaiah 56, 11. Uh, each one according to his beta, each one according to his own personal gain, right? We all toil out in the field and obviously we need to work and we need to put food on the table, etc., etc. But, uh, you know, that can't be all we're doing. We need to have a bigger universal look. Um, we need to care about God. We need to care about the Jewish people. Uh, we need to care about a lot of different things in that regard. Okay. Got to have a bigger vision. That's the point here. Bigger vision. Um, so we each so in the gain of this world to inherit this world, right? 
they, they're, people are constantly trying to gain this world to inherit this world. That's what they're concerned about. This worldly things, you know, am I going to put the food on the table today? You know, do I want, can I get, can I buy the new BMW? Um, can I, uh, you know, get this new uh, piece of clothing? You know, whatever, whatever your thing is. Um, now we're going to keep going here. Um, and they surely uh, are not the people uh, who this was written about. Um, people of valor, the ones who are in awe of God, the ones who hate personal gain. Um, this is another verse in the Torah. Um, it's contrasting it to the, these people. Uh, people of valor, the one who are in the ones who are in awe of God. Right, the people who truly have a remembrance of God and are actually thinking about God, not just thinking about their own self, but they're thinking about a bigger vision, the energy that connects us all, the spirit that is within every person and throughout all of life, the thing that is the tie between every person and humanity, all creatures of the world, all things in this universe, right? They hate, these people hate personal gain, right? They're trying to flee from just their own personal gain and they're really trying to connect to what's called the klau, the general, the mass, the the thinking about the forest and not the trees, really, connecting themselves to the group instead of the individual in that regard, caring about other people, right? Seeing themselves as part of the group in that regard. Sacrificing. And that's, again, that verse is from uh, Exodus 18.21. So rather, so the Zohar makes an interesting comparison here. Rather, all of them whelp in their prayers like dogs on Yom Kippur, right? God, uh, the Zohar compares this to like dogs, like barking, like they see the food that's uh, delicious for them. And the dog really wants the, the food, and it yelps, and that's all it wants. And it's once it has its food, it can go away from the master, doesn't care at all, but all it really just wants is food, right? That's what a dog does. We're not like that, right? We have to have a relationship. It's more than just, I want what I want, and that's it. It has to be a relationship. It has to be a give and take. It has to be um, bigger than just um, reward and punishment and you know, getting what you, just living another day, it has to be about building meaning in our lives. It has to be about connecting to Hashem. It has to be connecting other people to Hashem and bringing a new energy, a new light into this world, a new light into our lives in that regard, a new light into our cloud, into the community. So he's now quoting the dog here. Bark, bark, give us food. <laughs> um, it, it sometimes sounds like that, you know. Uh, just, you know, we got to make sure our prayers are not just about physical um, you know, can I make money this year? Uh, you know, or can I, uh, can I, can I lose that 10 pounds that I've always wanted to lose? You know, we should be thinking about bigger things. You know, God has a bigger picture in mind for us, I think, you know, and they only ask for forgiveness to gain more life in the here and now, right? They're only worried about the here and now. Write us in the book of life, they say, and they are really, and, and, and really, truly, you know, this is, is truly arrogant. Aze nefesh in Hebrew. They're truly arrogant. Uh, strong of soul, literally. Arrogant. Um, uh, it's like it's like people who uh, do worship of foreign gods, the, the, the Zohar says, right? They're really worshiping a foreign god. They're not, surely not worshiping God. They're, they're worshiping themselves, right? They think that all that matters is their own personal gain. They're not worried about Hashem. You think they're thinking about God right now? No, they just want what they want. Um... So that they and they and and, and the Zohar says that they cry to their God and they don't have any shame and the, the the people who do foreign worship that they cry to their God and they don't have any shame to pray and only request what benefits for themselves, right? This is the, they only request what benefits. Remember, they're only concerned with their own benefit, right? We have to have again, repeat. How many times do we have? Uh, we have to look out at the claw at the bigger picture, not just ourselves. That there is no one. Um, there's no one around, uh, there's no one, that there's no one who can call upon God in repentance and that God should return his divine presence to the world. Like if someone did uh, repentance, God can return his presence to the world, but they don't do that. They just ask and ask and ask for, for new things, but they don't accompany that with tshuva. They don't accompany that with actually trying to make oneself a better person, right? And if they did that, God maybe would help them. But it's really arrogant to ask for something and, uh, you know, not give anything in return that God. God wants us to do tshuva. God wants us to be closer to him. God wants us to be better people. God wants us to care about the other, about the downtrodden, to be better people, right? And if we, if we want to live another day, if we want to live in God's earth, we have to be that way. If we want to be successful at what we do in life, we have to be better people, right? That's what Hashem asks for us. 
Anything else would be arrogant to ask from God something if we can't give God what God wants. Right? That's what a relationship is about. So that's the end of the Tikkun Azor there, that passage. And then the, the Rabbi Eliyahu Davidus comes in and he says, The passage from the Tikkun Zohar explains how appropriate it is that one who should rouse themselves and achieve for love of God's holy presence to rise it up from the dust in the diaspora and not in order to re receive some sort of personal gain. Right? So he's summarizing here the message saying that we, do, we need to do tshuva not because... We need to do tshuva not because we just want to like uh, you know live another day and uh, you know uh, make money for the year and get get the the things you want in the personal and world, but no, it needs to be for Hashem. It needs to be bringing down a holy presence in this world, for bringing energy in this world, to bring a new light. We need to have a bigger picture, right? Um, and that's what he means by raising the shchina from the dust, right, in the diaspora, right? The shchina, the whole kabbalistic idea that. The Holy Spirit is in the dust. It's got its face down on the ground. We gotta lift it up. Wipe the dust off, right? As we say in Lichado D, right? Wipe wipe the dust off. Rise up. Wake up. Right? Wake up. Um and as and so this was all said above. Um, not in order for some personal gain, not like people worship foreign gods, all said above. He's restating here. And then also Rabbi Shimon Bar Yohai. Um, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yohai was a Tana was a rabbi in the Mishnah and the Talmud in that time. And supposedly, we think, the, the, the Eliyahu Davidus certainly thinks that, uh, Rabbi Eliyahu Davidus certainly thinks that he wrote the Zohar, although we now know as scholarly that pseudepigraph it's only pseudepigraphical, um, that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai wrote the Zohar. We know it's probably some uh, uh, mystically inclined Jews in, this, in, Spanish in Spain in the 13th century, but that's regardless. So, but also, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai explains in this passage, that it is truly arrogant to come to Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur saying, write us in the book and ask for forgiveness and atonement without any striving for Juba. Right? It's, it's, it's really arrogant to come on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and say, you know, I never come all year. You know, Hashem, I, I haven't talked to you. But you know what? Just give me another year of life. Why? Uh, why not? You know? One, you, you're not even valuing life. You're saying, Hashem, just give it to me for free. It's not, it's not, even, it's not even a value for anything. I'm going to come this one day. I'm going to sacrifice a couple of hours and Hashem... Give me everything I want, you know, make my job good, make my life good, uh, give me that new BMW, and, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You know, it's just, it's just, it's arrogant. It's just arrogant. If it's not accompanied with a striving for tshuva, for a striving to return to Hashem, for a striving to bring God into your life, for a striving to really sincerely be looking to change yourself and looking to be in this world, to be in the world that God made for us, the true world, not this world that is covered from Hashem and is, is, is covers what really the true essence of our world, right? We need to be able to bring ourselves to that point sincerely to do tshuva for Hashem, to bring God's Holy Spirit back into this world. And then we could really, um, then we might be able to say, Katmenu Bosef Rechaim, right? Write us in the book of life. Seal us in the book of life. Give us another year, Hashem. Give us another year. Right? Then we can. We might be able to do that. Uh, in this way, uh, we ask God every day for things in our requests in the Shemona Esrei prayer. God says to Israel, You have come to ask that I should do this and this. What is the tshuva then that you did? So we ask every day for things in our Shemona Esrei prayer, our petitionary prayers that we say during the that we're supposed to say every day in the Shemona Esrei, the standing prayer that we say in synagogue, um, we ask for things. We say, God, you know, give us a plentiful year. Uh, make this year good. Forgive us for our sins, um, you know, et cetera. Give, bring peace to our world, all these things, you know. But God will always say back to you, okay, so what's the truth you did? If you want me to do this, if you want me to do X, Y, and Z for you, right? We have an unlimited list, a honey-do list of, of things for God to do for us, Right? So God always says back one thing. So, what, so then what shuba did you do? Did you really sincerely try to come back to God? Did you sincerely try to make yourself a better person? Because then I can do that for you, right? Then I can, I can make changes in your life. But you really have to do the work yourself in the beginning of trying to do shuba in a sincere way. Right? And that's what the high holiday is about. So don't come to high holiday services in a way of arrogance saying, God, you know, make my life better, this and that. Uh, you know, with, without actually trying to do tshuva and trying to do repentance, try to make yourself life better. Try to try to make you yourself a better person. Try to make the world a better place. Try to say a sorry to people that you hurt. 
do some real work, and then you can come to and God. We'd love for you to come and say and ask God for what you need to ask God for. It. We all need things in this life. That's not what the the Zohar is saying. It's not that you don't need anything. We all know that you need things, but it's just a matter of of also um, what reason are we asking for, right? Are we uh, in relationship with God, or is it just some uh, a candy machine that we can keep pressing the button if we, uh, you know? If, if we want them to shake it and the candy will eventually come out, right? No, it's a relationship. God is a being. God is our Father in heaven. Right? We should really be related to God. We should really be conversing with God. We should be in relationship with God. So with that, we end our Reishit Chof Mashior for the week. Um, it was wonderful um, learning with you this week, and I look forward to uh, many, many more learning. Um, have a great Slichot. Um, a great start of the true high holiday period. Look forward to talking to you soon. Bye now.